Greetings LEGO fans and welcome back to another build. For this week's release, we're coming back to the Star Wars line with the recently released UCS Republic Gunship. Kit number 75309, 3,292 pieces. And to all you Star Wars fans out there, this should be a very recognizable ship. Seen in Episode 2, Episode 3, and of course throughout the Clone Wars series. And very soon, we'll be seeing it on this table. But first, of course, we need to open up this box, see what we have inside, get this build underway, and then we can have a closer look at this pretty cool looking Republic Gunship. So here we have, from the Ultimate Collector series, one Star Wars Republic gunship. And as we come to expect from this line, this ship is both large and nicely detailed. As one would expect from a gunship, this military aircraft is well equipped to provide support to their troops on the ground, execute some airstrikes, or engage in some close quarters air to air combat. To facilitate this, this ship is equipped with three laser cannons, four turrets, a whole host of air to ground missiles and air to air missiles, as well as being a troop carrier. Now to get a closer look, as usual, starting right in front, we have a pair of laser cannons, each one mounted on a ball joint, giving a nice wide range of motion and being very useful for clearing the ground ahead of them before they land and deploy the troops. Just a little further back, on either side of the ship, we find an open archway where our troopers can get in and out and leads to another room at the front of the ship where, amongst other things, you'd find the medical droid. Then going back just a little bit further, again on both sides of the ship, we come to the first of the turrets. These would typically be manned, having a clone trooper within, and have a range of motion allowing it to sweep from side to side, clearing targets on either side of the ship. Heading to the back and skipping the interior for now, we come to these side panels, which you can slide backwards, exposing the interior a little bit more and making it easier for our clone troopers to get in and out. Now, making it all the way to the back of the ship, we have another one of these laser turrets, again, mounted on a ball joint, so having a very wide range of motion. And just beneath that, we have a little door that can open up allowing for the troopers to load equipment, speeder bikes, or other in and out the back. Moving topside and making our way all the way back to the front, we have the double bubble cockpit, 
where our pilot and co-pilot will each be able to sit within their own enclosure and having some pretty basic controls in front of them. No flight sticks or anything of the nature, which I find to be a little surprising because I'm pretty sure the original subject does indeed have a flight stick and this is the UCS kit, so I would expect that level of detail to be in there. As before, moving towards the back of the ship, we find a bank of missiles. Loaded into two carousels that are mechanically linked together, so as you rotate one, the other one rotates in turn. These missiles will be used for airstrikes, supporting the troops on the ground. And to fire them, they will be loaded into the long launch tubes that are located just to either side of these missile carousels. With the body covered, we now come to the wings, where at the tip of each one, we find a nice little ball turret. This one's unmanned, and the quote unquote real gunship wouldn't be able to rotate freely in all directions, but in this model, just sits static in place. And then on the underside, each wing is equipped with four air-to-air -air missiles for the aerial combat and situations that are sure to arise. And there are four more of these located within the gunship. I don't think they can fire from here. I'm pretty sure the troops would need to reattach these to the bottom of the wings for the next time they take off, but here's some extra ammunition. And all the way in the back, we can see there's a pair of computer consoles here, so our troops can get some information of some sort. Not sure what they would need to see. And that brings us to the display stand, which is in its classic all black, having a typical UCS plaque in the front, giving all kinds of details and specs about the gunship itself. And on either side, you have two minifigures. The kit comes with a Jedi, in this case, Mace Windu, although I'm not really sure why. I don't recall him having anything particular tying him to the gunship. And there doesn't seem to be anything special about this Mace Windu. He seems to be just a stock Mace Windu character that I've already got in my collection. So that's a little disappointing for this UCS kit. But then we get this clone commander, which is a set exclusive, so that's pretty great. I think he's got some fabulous detailing, both front and back. I love the helmet. And there really aren't that many sets available currently that have Clone Wars Zero Troopers. So to be able to add this guy to my collection with this really cool helmet is most definitely welcome at this time. As an additional note to the minifigs, this kit isn't quite built to minifig scale. I mean, it kind of is, and it kind of isn't at the same time. Up in the cockpits, the minifigs fit quite nice, so everything is good here. But when you move down to the turrets, the minifigs do kind of fit in here. I mean, if you put them standing up, they fit just fine, but theoretically these troopers should be sitting down, so the turrets are a little bit large for the minifigs. And then, when you come to the standing zone in the back of the ship, the minifigs are way too short. So, while some parts of the ship can load up with minifigs, other parts can't, and that's a little disappointing because, of course, I'd love to have some pilots in there, get some troopers into the turrets, and then, of course, have a lineup of troopers waiting to be deployed. But, of course, this can't really be done, so, well, some points lost here. But overall, I think this is a pretty great display kit. Of course, it's a UCS kit, so it's going to be quite large, and that, on its own, is going to generate some attention. The details are pretty good, but, you know, this is a Clone Wars era ship. It's from when the military had a lot of money, and they definitely don't look like they're being held together by rebel mechanics that are just fixing it with any parts necessary to just make it work. So it's a little more clean, it's a little more refined, and the detailing is, of course, by this nature, a little bit less. So, while I do think this is a pretty great display piece, as far as other UCS kits go, in my books, this one just doesn't score as high as some of the others. Like my favorite, the UCS Y-Wing, which the surface detailing, the grappling, is just phenomenal. As a play kit, this one just fails. It's a little bit too large and unwieldy to fly it around. There's really no great place to hold it as you want to do so. There aren't any projectiles, hidden features, mechanical features, other than those two rotating missiles. So in my opinion, this one is best left sitting on its display stand. Or in this case, I've decided to hang this one from the ceiling where I think it looks fantastic. And it just solidifies my opinion that this kit was made for display and not for play. And as to noteworthy parts that you might be tempted to reuse in another build, the two cockpit bubbles and the four turret bubbles are all looking fantastic and are set exclusives, so kind of appealing in and of themselves. And beyond that, there's a lot of really large pieces in here, which I find to be very appealing when looking at a set and analyzing its parts for future use. Overall, I would say this is a decent UCS kit. It's not my favorite out there, but I would say that's because the subject matter is not my favorite. I'd say the designer did a really good job recreating a ship. It's just not a ship that would have all much in the way of interesting mechanical features or finer details to show off. So if you're a LEGO Star Wars fan and have been collecting all the kits out there, especially the bigger and more impressive ones, or are really drawn in by the pieces of this kit that you want to reuse for some future projects, then I think you'll be really satisfied with your purchase. But otherwise, I think you'll find this one just to be fair. And in my opinion, for the price of this kit, there's probably some others that you could buy and would enjoy even more. But if displaying this one is what you have in mind, I really do recommend you try hanging it from the ceiling because I find it to be much better than a display stand. 